This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I picked up this piece from Habitat for Humanity Restore for 60 bucks. Now, you guys know that I am not opposed to painting furniture on occasion, but you also know that I love mid-century furniture and usually try to preserve wood where I'm able to. And as you can see, I've got my work cut out for me. Willow's not too sure about my choices in life. This is covered top to bottom in, it looks like sponge rolled paint. I'm not a pink fan, but that doesn't really matter here because obviously this serves somebody well for a time. There is a bit of a smell to it, but if you look here on the bottom, you can see a little bit of mildew and I'm pretty sure that's what's causing it. I almost walked away from this one. I actually left the store and came back. My hope is that there's beautiful walnut veneer underneath, but what condition is it going to be in? I have no idea. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. There doesn't appear to be any major damage. There's a few decent gouges, but as far as I can tell, there's no big chips missing, which is really awesome. Paint like this can either come off really easily or take forever. I've set aside a few days for this project, so we'll see how it goes. I love using these polyback tarps on my floor. It helps protect it from, well, everything really. <laughs> I'm going to start by taking out the drawers and as you can see literally every single plastic drawer guide is broken but that's okay I have a few of them on hand to replace them with. Now I'm going to be attempting first to scrape off this paint. If it doesn't work, I'll try a stripper, but my scraper hasn't been sharpened since a few pieces ago, so I'm just going to give it a bit of a sharpen here. There's different ways you can do this. Sometimes I use a file. You can also use something like this with a little bit of water or oil. The main thing to keep in mind whether you're using a file or a stone like this is that you hold it flat. And if you look here, you can see where it has actually made contact and where it hasn't. So I'm going to keep going back in until this whole side of the blade is uniform. And then just lay it flat here to remove the burr. I'll link a video down below as well as a timestamp where I go into a lot more detail than I do here if you're interested in seeing how I sharpen my scrapers. Moment of truth, big breath in, and the paint comes right off. You can't see my face right now, but I am probably grinning from ear to ear as I'm doing this. It's not quite as easy as it looks here because I have to remove the paint, but I also have to remove the original lacquer finish. So as I'm doing this, you'll be able to see the different layers. Paint comes off. You can see the original finish here, and then this is the walnut. I'm so happy. I knew it was walnut. I knew it. So far, I'm not seeing any damage that is significant, so I'm super happy. I need to get to work on these legs though. A lot of the time, these mid-century walnut veneered pieces don't have walnut legs. Usually it's elm or ash, sometimes it's beech or birch, but I'm not gonna know until I get all this paint off.
There is an area that can be a bit of a drag when you're trying to remove paint from a piece, and that's this little lip here underneath the top. You can see here where the pressed wood is in between the layers of the walnut veneer. But what makes this difficult is that I have to try to scrape the paint from the top without scraping the veneer on the sides because they're going to be running in different directions. But I've done it enough that I have a pretty good feel for it. Quite often these pieces also do not have solid walnut frames usually, again it's some other type of wood. And it usually goes that these braced pieces in the front are the same type of wood as the legs. So how does one go about removing paint from concave areas like this here? You could use a chemical stripper. I'm using this teardrop shaped scraper. It has a point on one side, which is great for picking paint out of small corners, and the rounded edge is perfect for spots like this. A bit of advice though, if you're looking to get a tool like this, spend a few extra bucks and get one of the kits where you get multiple heads, which allows you to detail scrape just about anything. I'm using my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray sander. I started off with 120 grit on all of the solid wood parts. And when it comes time to do my first sanding on the veneered portions, I used 180 grit first and then finished with 220. Some people don't bother with the bottom, but you can see here on the right side, I already cleaned this up a little bit. All I used was a 180 grit, and compared to the other side where you still have paint splatter and overall dinginess, it really helps make your piece look more professional. So I showed you how to scrape these concave edges, but what about sanding it? I like using these rubber contour grips. You get a few different sizes in a pack. One end is concave, one end is convex, so if you're dealing with fluted details or the opposite, these are perfect for that. I'm going to go ahead and do my second round of sanding as well as try to pick out any little remaining bits of paint. And then I'm going to do two coats of Mohawk Vinyl Sealer and this is going to seal the wood prior to lacquer on the walnut and seal the wood prior to toner and then lacquer on the parts that are ash. Once the two layers of vinyl sealer had dried, it was time for some Mohawk pre-catalyzed lacquer. The color you see on the walnut is not toned, that's literally what color the walnut is, but those braces in the front had to be toned to match that color. With toner, you want to do very light coats and build on the color. You don't want to try to do one big thick coat. As I was spraying my third and final coat of lacquer on the carcass of this chest of drawers, the inevitable happened and I noticed a few little pieces of fuzz that had probably, I don't know, fallen off my shirt. You have to be really careful doing this, but sometimes you can use some tweezers to pull it out. Now if you remember in the beginning I talked about how this piece had a little bit of a smell. It was kind of that mildewy, musty smell, so I'm using some of this odor blocking primer spray on the interior of the piece. So even with a respirator on and the door open, there's a lot of chemicals floating around from all of these sprays. So it was time for a little nacho break outside on his leash. Mm. 
He's only ever seen the leaves through the door. He hasn't played with them literally out on the deck. With the main part of the dresser already finished, now I can turn my attention to the drawers. They're gonna need some work. These are most likely solid wood handles, but I need to get the paint off them and sand them down and see what I'm working with. So looking at these now, I can tell that these are not walnut, which is kind of a bummer. I was really hoping they would be solid walnut. But while I ponder what I'm going to do with those handles, I have a lot of scraping to do. When working on pieces like this, it's not always possible to get every little speck of paint off, so I'm trying to be realistic here. When you're scraping these mid-century pieces, you want to make sure you know which direction the veneer is running. I almost messed up one of the drawers because the veneer was running vertically instead of horizontally. The three other drawers all had horizontal grain. If the wood underneath the handle hadn't been visible, I would never have known and I probably would have scraped it in the wrong direction, so that's just something to keep in mind. I'm using some shellac to reseal the drawers once everything is sanded smooth. And now it's time to have a look at these handles. Like I said, these aren't walnut like the veneer is on the dresser. And because I had so many different tones of walnut and colors going on, I needed something to unify all of the drawers and I thought that my best bet would be to paint the handles. I'm sure the mid-century lovers are squirming in their chairs right now. But what's nice about doing just a touch of color like this is that it takes the piece from basically a brown box and modernizes it a little bit. There's always an argument, well, mid-century doesn't need to be modernized. It's iconic, and that's true, but there's a reason some of these get painted. So if by painting the handles, I can keep the wood grain natural instead of having to put a thick opaque finish on it like it would have had originally from the factory, I can show off that walnut wood grain, add a little bit of a modern flair, and hopefully keep this piece in use for decades to come. The first coat of coal black is always a bit scary for beginners. You can see this has one coat, this piece has two coats, and this one already has three coats. For the legs, I used roughly the same procedure as the outside of the cabinet, where I used a vinyl sealer and lacquer, but on the legs I ended up using some toner. I used perfect brown first, and then medium brown walnut. The goal here isn't to make the legs the exact same color as the walnut veneer, but I want it to be at least close to one of the tones that you find in the drawers. One thing that I wasn't prepared for was every single drawer having a slightly different hue, and, and normally when you have a drawer that has vertical grain, it's usually on the top. Andrea and I were both looking at the piece, and she suggested I put the darkest drawer on the bottom, and then we switched a few other drawers, and it ended up having this really cool ombre effect. This is just a really, really beautiful one-of-a-kind piece now, instead of a uniform brown box. I used Mohawk's Easy Vinyl Sealer, these toners in Perfect Brown, Medium Brown Walnut, and then sealed everything with pre-catalyzed lacquer. 
I did use some of this odor killing spray inside and I didn't show it on camera but I used this water-based stain for the top and sides of the drawer faces. I used this black spray paint on the metal bar that holds the legs on, sealed the drawers with a bullseye shellac, painted the drawer handles in coal black and then sealed that with this beeswax hemp oil combo. Let me just start by saying that if I hadn't done this transformation myself, I might not have believed it. I've done a lot of restorations and refinishing where paint removal was a big part of the process. And although this took a lot of time, I did get lucky with this. The previous owner didn't prime or scuff sand the original finish, which made it so much easier to reverse the process of painting. If you like this style of video, please consider giving me a thumbs up, sharing this video with your friends, and possibly even subscribing to my channel so that you can see more of it. I'm a bit of a mixed channel, I do some restorations and some painting, so if you straddle that line, you'll probably really like this channel. As always, thank you so much for watching, please stick around after the reveal for a quick word about our sponsor and the link to my new website. Cheers! As you know, I've been working with Squarespace over the last few weeks to finally build myself a website. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. This week I focused on getting the gallery finished, and one thing that's really important for me is that viewers have the same experience whether they're on a desktop or mobile. So I love that Squarespace allows you to edit your website and make individual adjustments for both of those platforms. There are still a few things I want to add to the website, like my online store, that will be coming very soon. But for now, as of today, this site is now live and you can go view it for yourself. If you've thought about making a website, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash transcend furniture and you can save yourself 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'll see you next time.